If you love music, then it may not surprise you to know that one of the best places in the UK for musical history would be the North West. Starting in the 50s and moving to great heights in the 60s, to a whole lot of soul, that's Northern soul, linking over the pond to the US, which continued into the 70s, to pre-Madchester in the early 80s, building to Madchester in the late 80s and early 90s, and yes, that's Madchester with a D. Why Madchester? Because people were mad for it, and it was a mad time, especially for music. In an area of around 60 square miles, emotionally, you can travel back in time as well as physically to different towns in the Northwest to experience a truly magical musical tour. Where do we begin a tour like that at the start? So we go to Liverpool and in particular to Matthew Street. Leaving the platform at Lime Street train station, you're immediately greeted by funny man Ken Dodd, complete with his tickling stick. But what has a comedian got to do with the music tour, I hear you ask? Ken was also a singer and had a hit with Happiness back in 1964. The perfect vibe to start a musical tour and the perfect greeting for your arrival to Liverpool. Outside the station, if you look up, you'll see the Radio City Tower. Yet another reminder that you've arrived in this wonderfully vibrant musical city. Matthew Street is not too far from the station on foot and well worth the stroll. If your map app starts playing up a bit, then no worries, just ask a local. The Liverpudlians take great pride in their city, their culture and their history, and with good reason. The positivity and light of the people shines through and they'll gladly point you in the right direction, as well as tell you little unknown facts and tidbits to enhance your experience, if you're lucky, and they have the time. Matthew Street is where it all started in Liverpool, with the opening of the Cavern Club in 1957. If you're a Beatles fan, then you'll be in your element, with the Beatles Museum, Beatles Memorabilia, Beatles Music, Beatles collectible items, Beatles tours, and just about everything Beatles you can possibly imagine, pun intended, but not just in Matthew Street. The Beatles presence is all over the city, and you'll be humming Strawberry Fields, Penny Lane, and A Hard Day's Night all day long. It wasn't just the Beatles that got their start from the Cavern Club. There's a musical wall in Matthew Street adorned with the names of hundreds of music stars and groups that have played there over the years. And a certain lady who worked as the hat check girl in the cloakroom of the cavern also made her debut there. Scylla Black, or our Scylla as she's affectionately known as, had a belter of a voice. And as you gaze at her statue, you can't help but thinking of her singing You're My World. Thank you, Scylla. Besides your beautiful voice, you gave us a Laura Laura laughs. Liverpool culture preserves the old and embraces the new, and the two are found hand in hand and side by side. The three graces proudly stand on the waterfront, which are the three buildings known as the Royal Liver, the Cunard and the Port of Liverpool. The Liver Bird proudly stands at the top of the Royal Liver Building, looking across the Mersey to Birkenhead. Just in front of the three graces, you'll find the larger-than-life statue of the Fab Four. Each member has something personal to them on their statue. No spoilers here, everyone needs to find out for themselves, that's part of the magic. Standing on the waterfront and looking at the flow of the Mersey, you'll find yourself humming Ferry Cross the Mersey by Jerry and the Pacemakers and remembering that Liverpool gave birth to the Mersey Beat back in the 60s. Jerry and the Pacemakers also had the iconic hit, You'll Never Walk Alone, which has become the Liverpool anthem and truly demonstrates that both the city and the people have overcome many battles and hard times and have triumphed over all of them. Further along the waterfront by Albert Dock is yet another musical statue, that of Billy Fury. Billy brings us halfway to paradise and reminds us that Liverpool really is a wondrous place. There is so much to see and do that you'll need a good few days to explore, 
And it's not all about the music. The history of the city, the maritime connection, the fashion, the cuisine, the nightlife, the shops, and even the beaches are unique to the area. There are so many famous people that come from Liverpool that they can't all be mentioned, but one in particular truly deserves a mention and hopefully a statue too. The wonderful Paul O'Grady, aka Lily Savage, also gave us much laughter, but more importantly showed us that he was all about heart with his tireless campaigning and wonderful love for animals. He was a great ambassador for the city and the next time you arrive in Liverpool Hopefully, you'll find a statue of him waiting to greet you too. 20 miles in the northeasterly direction from Liverpool is Wigan. It's not a tourist destination, and some would say it's a typical industrial northern town. However, this is a musical tour, and Wigan certainly made its mark on the music scene. It was home to a nightclub called Wigan Casino, famous for its all-nighters, and was supposedly voted Best Disco back in 1978 by Billboard magazine, beating Studio 54 into first place. It was undisputedly the birthplace of Northern Soul, which began in the early 70s. The up-tempo sound developed from soul and Motown music in the US. From 1973 to 1981, Wigan Casino was the place to be. It was an underground sound and movement and it gave a chance for people to rebel against mundane working life and escapism where everyone could unite and be who they wanted to be through the music. Records were traded at the club with the rarer the record the better being the main aim. The style was smart but loose clothing such as Oxford bags and vests. These were perfect as they allowed more flexibility on the dance floor. Wigan Casino sparked the opening of other clubs around the north and beyond, but sadly the club closed in 1981 and was demolished in 1984. However, the nostalgia lives on and still to this day Northern Soul has followers from all over the world. Northern Soul dance competitions are still going strong and music of the Tams, Al Wilson, Gloria Jones and many others is still very much alive. Next on the music tour, and about 18 miles east of Wigan, we arrive at Manchester, which had had its very own Northern Soul Club in the Twisted Wheel. It was the early 80s and Manchester was becoming the sound to be heard. Joy Division, later to become New Order, the Smiths and others were the lead up to Manchester, as the new music scene became known as. The Hacienda nightclub was the place to be with the in crowd, and band after band had hit after hit. The Happy Mondays, the Stone Roses, James, 808 State, the Chemical Brothers, the Verve, and of course Oasis, with the list going on. Famous artists from Frankie Knuckles to Madonna performed at the club, such was its far-reaching pull and influence. Sadly, the club developed a reputation for substance abuse and violence, and went into decline until it finally closed in 1997. Whilst Liverpool has embraced its music heritage to the fullest, Manchester has yet to do so. There is no wonder wall commemorating all the musicians and no preservation of famous clubs. The site that firmly placed Manchester on the music world stage is now a block of flats with just the name remaining. It could be said that because of the downfall, it's best left forgotten and not celebrated. However, it was about the music first and foremost, and the music is what should be preserved and celebrated. It deserves to be, because people were mad for it. As Shakespeare once wrote in the play Twelfth Night, If music be the food of love, play on. <laughs> 